a boy saves a homeless man from certain end, after which he learns that he has helped an unusual person. <laughs> Ten-year-old Michael stands on the edge of a cliff with his arms outstretched to the side. He is very frightened, but decides to jump off anyway. Events are moved back in time. Michael's family is about to move into a new spacious house because his mother is pregnant with another child. When they arrive at the house, they find that it is in terrible shape. Michael tells his parents that it was a bad idea to move here because the building looks like it is falling apart. He doesn't like the fact that he has to move because of the second child, moreover, into such a creepy house. However, the decision is made and the family begins to settle in. The boy asks permission to take the room near the bathroom, but the parents are going to give it to the newborn baby. Michael, on the other hand, gets a room in the attic, full of insects and cobwebs. He is clearly not happy about this and becomes jealous of the baby. In the morning, his mother suggests that Michael skip school and help her with the house arrangements. At first the boy is happy, but he learns that his mother plans to make repairs to the baby's nursery with him. Then he presumably remembers an important test and goes to school upset. At the swimming pool, the PE teacher tells the boy to climb the platform to pass the diving test. But Michael is afraid of heights and cannot do it. Because of this, he is bullied in the shower by his classmates, but his best friend Licky stands up for him. After school, the boy decides to go into the rundown barn, which is in the garden of the house. A frightening male voice is heard from the darkness, asking him who is there. Frightened, Michael runs as fast as he can back home. There he finds his mother, crouching in pain, and calls her an ambulance. At the hospital, his father tells Michael that his mother gave birth to his baby sister. However, the baby girl was born prematurely and was placed in a special incubator. As soon as Michael sees his sister, he becomes fond of her and forgets all his hard feelings. Did you see that? She looked right at me. The next day, Michael makes another attempt to enter the barn. He is determined to find out who lives there. However, his father considers the junk-filled barn a dangerous place for a child and forbids his son to go there. Naturally, the boy does not listen to him and rushes out to explore. In the yard, he meets an odd-looking girl sitting on his fence. She friendly introduces herself as Mina and tells him that she is their only neighbor for miles around. During a brief conversation, Michael remains unfriendly and the girl leaves. The boy looks through the barn window with curiosity, trying to see someone inside. Then he goes inside and sees a very dirty man in rags in the corner. The tramp raises his hand exhaustedly and tells Michael to go away. Michael rushes to tell his father about the homeless man, but accidentally overhears him talking worriedly on the phone. The condition of the newborn baby girl has deteriorated and the doctors decide to keep her under observation at the hospital. To avoid upsetting his father even more, the boy keeps quiet about what he saw in the barn. At school, Licky invites his friend to come to a sporting event where he will be jumping off a diving board. Michael tells him about the homeless man he met in his barn. The boy is concerned that the man looked quite weak and sick. Licky advises his friend to chase the man away as soon as possible and forget he exists. During class, Michael is surprised to find a whole swarm of insects in his desk. His classmates immediately begin to shout in fright, and the lesson is interrupted. On the way home, the boy is stopped by Mina, who unexpectedly jumps in front of him from a tree. The strange girl shows Michael her bird drawings. She persistently asks the boy questions about his interests, much to his annoyance. Mina points out a bug in her neighbor's hair and then immediately leaves. Michael decides to pay another visit to the homeless man. He is horrified to discover that the strange man is eating slugs and insects in the barn. The kind boy offers to help him, and says he can get him some normal food. The man names the numbers 27 and 53 and says they are very tasty. He then chases the boy away and asks him to forget he exists. While the parents are worriedly talking to the doctors, Michael meets a sweet old lady named Grace at the hospital. Despite her age, she is full of positivity and says that the main thing in life is not to give up. But it's hard for the boy not to get discouraged in such an atmosphere. He slides his hand with a stethoscope into his sister's incubator and listens carefully to her heartbeat, comparing it to his own. At home, Mina catches her neighbor off guard again. You didn't tell me you had a sister. <laughs> Nevertheless, she is the only one who asks Michael about his sister's condition. She also tells her new acquaintance that she is homeschooled. She loves nature and is fascinated by the poems of William Black, who walked without clothes and saw angels in the garden. Michael thinks he's just a lunatic. In the evening, his father orders food delivery, and the boy remembers the homeless man's wish. He asks to order dishes number 27 and 53. At night, Michael takes the leftover food out of the trash and takes it to the barn. The homeless man ravenously eats the food with his hands, complimenting the boy on his resourcefulness. The man asks why Michael helps him, for surely there is somebody else who still needs help. Thinking of his sister, the boy sadly responds that he can't help others. 
the homeless man begins to cough heavily and Michael notices a hump on his back. He wonders what it is, but the man once again tells him to get out. Before leaving, he picks up a feather that was lying next to the man. The next day at the hospital, the old lady shows Michael pictures of her son. She tells him that he is a very busy man, but has promised to visit her this weekend. Michael happily announces that his parents are taking his little sister home today. After thinking about it, he asks Grace if her hands hurt and tells her about the sick homeless man who lives in his barn. Michael really wants to help him, but the man doesn't want to do anything with his life and seems to be waiting for the end to come. The elderly lady advises him not to give up on his quest and treats him to some grapes. The family returns home, which the father has partially tidied up. At night, Michael is awakened by his sisters crying. He walks into his mother's room and asks if the baby is okay. The woman is pleasantly surprised by her son's concern and assures him that his sister will be fine. A new day dawns and there is a PE lesson at the school stadium. The teacher sneeringly advises Michael not to jump too high so he doesn't get scared. As he and his laughing classmates look away, the boy speeds up and jumps. He jumps as much as six feet in length, yet no one notices. In the evening, Michael brings the homeless man some aspirin, which he spits out in disgust. Hearing the little girl cry, the man derisively taunts him and calls children useless creatures. The boy asks how the homeless man knew about the numbers on the menu. The strange man confesses that he used to come out of the barn to rummage through the garbage of the previous owners of the house. He fondly recalls finding an unfinished bottle of dark beer there. The boy is surprised that the former owner never once saw a homeless man in his barn. The man says people often don't notice him or just think he's imaginary. Michael, with a smile, says he's not sure what kind of being he is. On the weekend, Licky and Michael are playing shooting games in the woods. Licky intends to take a shot at a defenseless hare, which his friend really doesn't like. Suddenly, Michael notices a strange gleam in the furry animal's eyes. He runs away, sensing that something bad is going on at home. His hunch is not wrong, he hears his parents arguing. The doctors tell them that the baby must be returned to the hospital urgently. The mother blames the father for bringing them to this horrible house without central heating. She is afraid of losing her newborn baby girl. It turns out that after Michael was born, it took a long time for the parents to have a second child. During this time, after hearing the baby's cries, the homeless man begins to cry and notices in the TV screen that his reflection is disappearing. The adults leave with the baby to the hospital, leaving their son home alone. Michael gets angry and starts kicking bushes in the yard. This causes the wind to rise in the barn and an earthquake to occur. The homeless man sighs heavily and watches doomfully. Meanwhile, the boy's little sister is placed back in the incubator and hooked up to some systems. Michael is visited again by Mina. When she learns that the boy is upset about his sister, she asks him to go for a walk. The girl takes him deep into the woods, where they see a tall, abandoned tower. She says she comes here when she needs to think. The children sit down near the river, and Mina advises Michael not to hold back his emotions. She herself has often cried after her father passed away. The boy sympathizes with Mina, finally develops a sympathy for the strange girl, and teaches her to imitate birdsong. Michael's parents are increasingly upset and look anxiously at the incubator with their little girl. The boy's father becomes irritable and hardly communicates with him. Lonely and sad, Michael decides to visit the homeless man. He is horrified to find that the man shows no signs of life. The boy presents a mirror to his nose to check his breathing. The homeless man regains consciousness abruptly, much to Michael's dismay. He tells the man about his sister's condition and the doctor's disappointing prognosis. The homeless man reacts with indifference to these words and says that people die every day. However, Michael is tired of seeing sad people around him in an action. He informs the homeless man that he intends to bring help to him. I just want to do something right. This bloody shed's about to collapse and you won't move. The man sneeringly says that Michael can bring the whole town to the barn. The boy leaves him, and the homeless man contemplates and wonder what he has said. Later, Michael brings Mina to the barn and introduces her to the man. The homeless man, in his usual manner, is rude to his new acquaintance. The boy gives him a dark beer, which he enjoys drinking. Mina touches the man's hand and notices that he is too cold, as if undead. She then expertly begins to talk about the human ossification process. After the encounter, Mina tells her friend that the homeless man does not look like a normal human being. At home, Michael's father irritatedly discovers new faults in the house. He is about to go to the barn to get planks to fix the floorboard in his son's room. To distract and stop him, Michael begins actively jumping on the bed. Eventually the floor collapses and the boy falls to the first floor with a scream. His father returns to the house and Michael apologizes with a smile. In the evening at the hospital, Michael meets Grace again. The old lady cheers the boy up and hands him fish oil capsules for the homeless man. She says sadly that her son never visited her. Michael offers to visit her instead, which pleases the elderly woman. Grace warns, 
however, that they may miss each other when she goes out to dance. Just remember, Demis can walk, should walk. The boy does not take Grace's words seriously, not understanding their meaning. In the ward, Michael's mother tearfully tells the family that the little girl's heart is not functioning properly. The doctors try to do everything they can, but the girl needs a complicated operation. At home, Michael's grief-stricken father drinks one bottle of dark beer after another. He is surprised to note that there should have been more bottles. With bitterness in his voice, the man tells his son that he regrets moving into the house. Michael wakes up in the middle of the night to loud noises from the garden. His father, who has been drinking too much, decides to vent his anger and set fire to the old barn. The boy desperately tries to stop him, but his father takes him back to the house by force. While the father searches for matches, Michael discreetly sneaks into the barn. He tries to convince the homeless man to escape, but he refuses to fight his fate. The father sets the decrepit structure on fire. However, Michael throws the homeless man onto his shoulders and manages to save him from the flames. Leaving him in the woods for the time being, the boy tries to soothe his sobbing father. My little baby. Little girl, Michael. After putting his father to bed, Michael runs to Mina's house for help and shows her his hand burned in the fire. Together, the children take the weary homeless man to the tower in the woods. Before falling asleep, the man gives his name, Skellig, and says that he is as old as the earth. The next day, the children feed the homeless man and decide to remove his old cloak. They are surprised to find that he has wings growing out of his shoulders. To figure out what kind of being Skellig is, the curious children decide to search for the homeless man's wings in some books. However, his wings do not look like the wings of insects, birds, or even angels. Studying the evolution of birds, Mina fantasizes that she and Michael can also change and live forever. Meanwhile, Michael's classmates sneak into his yard and eavesdrop on their conversation. The boys begin to make fun of him and Mina, and the boy decides to stop talking to them. In the middle of the night, the children sneak back into the high tower. They are surprised to find that Skellig has risen to his feet and is already eating mice on his own. Noticing the midnight guests, he asks them to come closer and hold his hands. The three of them take off and begin circling in the air. After landing, Skellig asks the children to remember this night. On his way out of the tower, Michael notices that his burned arm has healed. The joyful boy returns home and draws a portrait of Skellig. His father walks into his room, concerned that his son is always away somewhere. He also asks Michael where his beer has disappeared too, but the boy can't answer that. The caring children bring Skellig bags of food and medicine. They want the being to gain strength and be able to fly again. The children take the man to the river, where they clean the dirt from his wings. Though he continues to grumble, he lets them take care of him. Suddenly the clouds thicken and the children begin to get cold. Then Skellig spreads his wings, looks up at the sky, and the sun comes out from behind the clouds, warming the children. Later, Michael returns to school. In class, Licky hands him a note reminding him of the upcoming diving tournament. However, the boy has to return home urgently as his sister's condition has deteriorated again. Michael runs as fast as he can to Skellig in the tower and begs him to heal his little sister, just as he cured the boy's arm. However, the magical creature says he can't help anyone else and pushes the boy away. Why are you so, so unhopeful? Skellig sadly ruffles Michael's hair and apologizes to him. He has long lost faith in himself and considers himself useless. Because of what is happening, Michael does not come to his friend's competition. Noticing that he is not among the spectators, Licky botches his important jump. Upset, Michael goes to Mina's house and spends the night. He confesses that he did not want his sister before. The boy blames himself for not wanting to move, not helping his mother, and that's why his sister was born early. Mina supports her friend and says she is familiar with the feeling. She used to blame herself, too, and thought it was because of her bad behavior that her father passed away. But in fact he was just tired of life and decided to end it early. In the morning Michael asks his father to take him to the hospital so he can be with his family during the operation. The father is adamantly against this and tells his son to go to school. An altercation ensues between them. Michael yells and accuses his father of not talking to him and not even telling him that they have wanted a second child for a long time. In the end, the father hugs him and lets him go to the hospital with him. While his sister is in surgery, Michael decides to visit Grace. The nurses sadly inform him that the old lady passed away the previous night. The distraught boy recalls Grace's admonitions, in which she told him never to give up. The boy decides to try to restore Skellig's faith. He rushes as fast as he can into the high tower. Licky, carrying a rifle, notices his friend running past and decides to follow him. He catches up with Michael at the tower. Doran accuses him of not coming to the competitions. The boy doesn't understand why his friend has distanced himself from him and spends all his free time with a strange Mina. However, time is running out and Michael asks Licky to stay out of his way. Angry, Licky decides to climb to the top of the tower and find out what his friend is hiding up there. A fight breaks out between the children, 
and Michael tries to warn Skellig of the danger. At the top, Licky sees a frightened white owl and is about to shoot it. Then Michael pushes his friend and angrily tells him to get away. At the bottom of the tower, Skellig approaches Michael and anxiously examines his wounds from the fight. The boy tries to convince the creature that he is not hopeless and can fly. I believe in you. Even if you don't. Michael stands on the edge of the cliff, spreading his arms out to his sides. Closing his eyes, he jumps off. Nearly at the water surface, he is caught by Skellig, who manages to fly off. He lifts the boy into the sky, and together they joyfully fly over the surrounding countryside. Michael's sister's surgery ends. The doctor tells the nurse that the girl is unlikely to survive the night. In the evening, Skellig sneaks into the hospital, unseen by humans. He enters the room where Michael's mother has fallen asleep in the chair next to her daughter. Opening the incubator, Skellig takes the baby in his arms and ascends into the air with her. He looks fondly at the little creature and they begin to twirl together. In the morning, the baby's vitals come back to normal and she gets much better. The mother tells the family about a strange dream in which she saw a dirty man with wings. However, the woman was not frightened of him. She was quite sure that he had come to help them. Michael smiles at what he hears. He suggests that his parents name their baby sister Grace. Michael's life goes back to normal. On the way home, his father sings songs and smiles happily. The boy makes peace with Licky and comes to his next competition. The baby sister finally arrives home, where a beautiful bright room awaits her. The children throw Skellig a picnic near the cliff with his favorite foods. He thanks Michael for being able to restore his faith in himself. It is time to say goodbye, for there are many more people in the world who need help. Finally, Skellig mysteriously tells the children that he is something between a man, a bird and an angel. The man disappears into the sky among the birds, and the happy children go home. Do you believe that magical beings live among us? Share your opinions in the comments and don't forget to give this video a like. See you soon.